Today, we're gonna talk about one of the most commonly skipped steps in building a new computer. And you know, this one's actually kind of important. Stay tuned. It's so simple. Why do people skip this? I've been building computers for a really long time. In fact, the first system I ever built was a 386SX20. Actually, it was this 386SX16 that I had overclocked to 20 megahertz. Believe it or not, that was actually a pretty big overclock back then. But in that time, I've built thousands of systems, and occasionally you build a computer that doesn't post. It's annoying, but with some troubleshooting, usually you can figure out what the problem is. And normally, it's pretty simple. However, it's really nice if you can run into these problems without the computer in the case. And for that, I highly recommend bench testing your hardware before you put it in the case. That way, if you need to troubleshoot anything, you can troubleshoot it out in the open rather than having to tear the computer apart to do it. Before we get started, there's a few things that you're gonna need in order to do this. Obviously, you're gonna need your motherboard, CPU, and memory. This is the absolute minimum that you need in order to get the motherboard to fire up. You don't need any of your other peripherals at this moment, especially if your motherboard itself has onboard video. If it doesn't, then you may need a GPU. If you don't have one because you haven't been able to get one yet, then any cheap GPU will work as long as it's new enough to work in the system itself. This is one that I keep around because it's a really ni nice little test GPU. I think you can pick these things up for pretty cheap. It's just a little Radeon HD that's probably 10 plus years old. But the next thing that you're gonna need is a power supply. This one here is just a cheap power supply that I keep laying around in my shop. It's a 400 watt Corsair, but you don't need anything special. You just need something. I would recommend using something that's a known good power supply. So at least that way you know that the power supply isn't the problem if you run into something. However, if you don't have another supply, the one that you're gonna be using in the system should work just fine as well. And then the next thing you're gonna need is something to actually set the motherboard itself on. I wouldn't recommend setting the motherboard directly on your table for a couple of reasons. For one, you wanna make sure that the motherboard is sitting on something that's non-conductive. And it's nice to put it on a nice soft pad because it not only will protect the motherboard itself, but it will also protect the surface you're laying the motherboard on. Next, you're gonna need something to be able to see the system after it fires up. So I would recommend getting yourself any kind of monitor that you can plug into the system. Any monitor will work. You don't necessarily have to use the monitor that you plan to use with the system, but if you have it, you might as well use it. So now, without further ado, let's stop talking about it and let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we wanna get our motherboard opened up and get it on that pad I talked about before. And you should be able to just open it up, discard all of the stuff inside. We're not gonna need that right now. However, don't throw it out because you are gonna need it for sure. We're gonna pull the motherboard out here. And then I'm gonna set the motherboard box to side. However, if you need to use the motherboard box in order to fire the system up, then make sure you set the system on the box itself. One thing I recommend though is you probably shouldn't fire the motherboard up on this bag. Most of the time they're non-conductive, but you definitely don't wanna take the chance. So this motherboard here actually comes with a little foam insert and you could probably use this to fire the system up, but it's kinda of thin, so. We're gonna go ahead and use the one that I have here. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and put the CPU onto the motherboard. And for that, we gotta open the box up here. Now, you don't necessarily have to install the CPU fan when you're doing this. However, it might be a good idea to do so, you know, because once you get it together, there's really no reason to take it apart after that. However, if you plan on running a water-cooled system, then you may not have a cooler in order to do this with, and it is okay to fire up a system without a cooler, as long as it's for very short periods of time. You don't definitely don't wanna run it for a long time. Now, when you install CPU, this is a Ryzen CPU here, so it's a lot easier to in install. You just lift up the ZIF socket right here and you attach the CPU with the arrow pointed at the same arrow on the motherboard. It's actually fairly simple. Now, the next step is to install the CPU cooler itself. Now, on this one, this screws down to the motherboard and on AMD motherboards, you have this little clipper tension on here that you're gonna have to remove before you put the CPU cooler on. So, I'm gonna remove that right now. 
Now, if you're not using a CPU that requires this assembly here, you can just discard this. You're not gonna need this again. However, it does help to hold on the bottom metal plate while the motherboard itself is in shipment. So I think that's why AMD puts these on there because I don't know of many coolers that use these. So attaching the cooler is simply lining it up to the retention plate on the bottom of the motherboard and then screwing it down. While you're screwing it down, I recommend going crosswise rather than just screwing the screws all the way down. You want to screw it down like you would lug nuts on a car. You want it to have even pressure all the way down. You don't want the CPU cooler to sit at an angle as it's going down. Let me show you how to do it. So the way you wanna tighten this down is you wanna go ahead and hold the cooler down so it's set even, and then you wanna tighten it down starting on one corner, and I usually just turn it a couple of threads so you can go one, two, and then move over to the other side and go one, two, and then kind of go in a cross pattern like this and continue to tighten it down in this cross pattern until you get it all the way down. All right, now that we have the CPU cooler on, we need to make sure to hook up the fan on it. And to do that, I typically usually roll this thing into a little loop so it doesn't get in the way of anything and then plug it down onto the motherboard just like this. So we're getting there. We almost have this thing together. The next thing that we're gonna need is some sticks of memory. To plug these in, you wanna line up the notch on the bottom of the module with the notch that's in the memory slot itself. You definitely don't wanna plug these in backwards. While the notch will make it really hard to plug them in backwards, I have seen people do it before and it has catastrophic effects. I've seen memory modules actually burnt because they were plugged in backwards. So make sure you plug them in properly. They should go in really easy. You wanna make sure to turn these latches down on the side when you're doing so and then plug it in. And you also wanna make sure that you plug these things in in dual channel mode if you happen to be using two sticks of RAM. So to do that, you should refer to your motherboard manufacturer's documentation. The book that comes with your motherboard should help you out on that. However, most of the times, if you stagger the memory modules, like skip a slot when you're plugging them in, that's usually how dual channel memory is installed. However, I have seen them right next to each other in some applications, so make sure to refer to your motherboard book in order to find out what's right for your system. All right, now that we have this thing ready to go, the next step is to clean up this mess, you know, so we can actually plug everything in. So to do that, we're gonna get our power supply, set it on our bench here, and we're only gonna need two plugs from the power supply. It's gonna be the 24 pin and the four pin that goes to the CPU power itself. Now yours might be either a four pin or an eight pin. Mine's an eight pin, but some motherboards come with a four pin power for the CPU. Either way, whichever one yours comes with, it's gonna be the same process. You're gonna want these two wires to plug into the motherboard. If your motherboard only has four pin CPU power, then just plug in four of the eight pins. The one, the one that fits is the right one for that slot. And now the next thing we need to plug in is the monitor itself. So we just take the monitor and plug it into the monitor port and we should be good to go. Now, this is all great. However, it's a really good idea to have a keyboard and mouse ready when you do this. So for me, I'm gonna use a wireless keyboard and mouse here and I'm gonna take my wireless dongle and go ahead and plug it into the system here. So for this point, as soon as we plug power in, we should be ready to go. Now to fire the system up, I would take a screwdriver and use this screwdriver to bridge the power button on the motherboard. Now be careful not to short out the wrong thing. You wanna be really cautious what you're touching hard metal objects to on your motherboard. So let me show you how I'm doing this on this one. So on this motherboard here, you can see right here is where the front panel header is connected. And on that front panel header, it's the one right to the outside right here that gives me power. So what I do is take my screwdriver and just arc it on this little pole right here, just like that, just to complete the circuit on the power button. And as you can see, the system fired up. So AMD processors can sometimes take a little while to post. So don't worry, if it doesn't post right away, that doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. So we just have to sit here and wait for this thing to fire up and it should fire up pretty quick. Hopefully, as long as everything went okay, it should. Probably should have posted by now. Yeah, something's wrong. And
And in this case, it looks like this system may not be posting. However, there might be a simple explanation for that. If we look at the screen right now where it says check signal cable, it says digital there, but we're not using a digital cable. So I bet you if I push this source button right here, that was a lot more stressful than it needed to be. So in many cases, the problem might not be that big of a deal if the system doesn't post. In our case, it was just simply the monitor was looking for the wrong cable because normally I run an HDMI cable to run my system in the backpack here. However, in some cases, you may have to pull the memory modules out, switch them around, or fire it up with just one module instead of two. There's lots of different reasons why a system doesn't post, and they're not always related to bad hardware. Sometimes it might simply be the fact that maybe you didn't seat the processor down correctly, or maybe a memory module isn't tight in its spot. So by pulling things apart and putting them back together, believe it or not, in some cases that will actually fix the system. In other cases that might be a little bit more complicated to fix, some AMD motherboards, now this isn't very common anymore, but if you're using a very, very new AMD processor on a motherboard that isn't quite as new, you might have an outdated BIOS that's not allowing it to post. Now in those situations, you're gonna need a processor that the motherboard supports in order to flash the BIOS. Unless your BIOS has a BIOS flashback feature, which this one actually doesn't. Yours might, and if it does, that might help you out a lot if you can get the BIOS flash pack to actually work the way that it's supposed to. If not, you may need to get an older processor in order to post the motherboard up in order to flash the BIOS. In those cases, it might be best off for you just to bring the motherboard down to somebody that does this for a living and allow them to flash it for you. They may have a processor laying around that they can use just for that purpose. There used to be a service that AMD offered to loan you a processor in order to do BIOS flashes, but I don't know if they do that anymore because this hasn't really been much of a problem too much lately. But hopefully, if everything went the way that it was supposed to, after you put power to the system, it should throw you into the BIOS. And if it does, then you're good to go. Go ahead and finish building your system, put all the components into the case, and have fun with your new computer. But anyway, if this was helpful to you, then please like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Oh, and hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.